air at mean bulk temperature of 25 Celsius and two atmospheres. So a lot of things to highlight right from the bat. From the get-go, we need to highlight there's two atmospheres there. So we need to account for that. And also that we're dealing with bulk temperature. So we don't need to do uh, sum up with anything, any other temperature to find the properties on the table. Flows through a two meter long tube of 25 mils diameter with an average velocity of four meters per second. Two balls is held at 75 Celsius, determine the heat transfer rate per unit area. So heat transfer rate per unit area, we know this guy very well. This is small q or just q over a, and it's just watts over meters squared, right? That's a horrible amp. Okay. So we need to find small q. Well, that's very, very easy, isn't it? Because Newton's law of cooling tells us that q equals h a delta t. So that means that if I want q over a, energy over a, I just need to multiply the convective coefficient by the delta t. Delta t was given, 75 minus 25. So the whole problem revolves around finding convective coefficient, okay? So let's see. Uh, I'm gonna go be very sneaky here and I'll paste the same join here and let's adapt to our situation now. We have, this is 75, temperature of the wall. It's still air and it's coming in at four meters per second. So we're given a velocity this time and it's mean temperature is, bulk temperature is, let's go do that over this here. TB for bulk or T, you can use TF if you're comfortable with, if T mean, up to you. T bulk has been given as 25 Celsius. The length of this guy is now two meters and the diameter is now 25 mils. Or 25 times 10 to the minus three meters. All right, so what do we need to do? Find out whether this is turbulent or laminar then find out whether this is fully developed or underdeveloped, pick the right equation and uh, find H, right? Find also find H. So let me go ahead and give you guys the value. So we're looking at 25 on table 85, 25 Celsius, that's 298 Kelvin. Probably gain some momentum by doing this. Okay, so these are the values from table 85 at 298. For the, um, for the pressure of two atmospheres, we have, again, two options, right? We can grab the value that we get off the table and multiply by two, because we know it's gonna be two atmospheres over one atmosphere, that's just two times the density of one atmosphere, or we can use the same method I just taught you guys in the previous problem, up to you, okay? Regardless, it becomes 2.37. With that, we can go ahead and calculate Reynolds. With Reynolds, we can figure out whether this guy is turbulent or laminar. And then I'll teach you guys what to do when we don't have a clue about being developed or underdeveloped, fully developed or underdeveloped. Okay, so Reynolds, density, velocity, diameter, viscosity. We have all this data. Uh, we have that, we have that. Diameter is 25 times 10 to minus three, velocity is four, so we have all that. So no worries there. One, 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 two, two. Turbulent or laminar, you guys tell me. Great, you guys got it. Okay, so this is greater than Reynolds critical, which again, 10,000 for us. So therefore, turbulent flow, let's do this in red. Okay, so this is where we reach the point in which we don't know whether it's fully developed or undeveloped. So if we just take a guess, that can be very, very problematic. So there is a little trick we can do, okay? And the trick is called the um, entrance length, okay? So the idea is, um, if you guys recall, if you guys recall, let me get rid of this, then these. We talked about how it becomes fully developed at some point, right? So if if we can calculate how long it takes for it to become fully developed, we can do a little analysis to find out whether our flow is majority is predominantly um, predominantly fully developed or predominantly underdeveloped. So say I find 
my entrance length to be over here. Then I then what I'm seeing is that from this point onwards, so this from this point forward, this flow is fully developed. So I would get fully developed equation. If I find my entrance length to be here, here, or here, then for the majority of the flow, this is underdeveloped, and I'll use use underdeveloped equations. If my entrance length is in the middle, then obviously things get a bit more complicated. But what you can do is you can apply this this equation here. It's also on your uh, equation sheet, okay? You can check it. You can check out over there if you want to. But let's put it here since we're solving it here. Okay, if the thing is laminar, then we can multiply our Reynolds by our diameter times 0 0.06. It's gonna give us the right entrance length. If, sorry, if our flow is turbulent, then we're gonna multiply the diameter by 4.4 and by our Reynolds to the power of one sixth. Okay, now I want to point out a couple of things before you guys get all happy about this equation. I want to point out that it's not as straightforward as it may look because this is like, this works, but it's under certain conditions and all that thing that we've been talking about empirical data, blah, blah, blah. So in this unit, you're welcome to use it if there's no clues, right? Because if there's a clue and you've been told by the wording like the previous problem, then you can be certain of that. And this one is the, what you do in case you don't have an idea and you need an estimation. Okay, so between the two equations here, we're going to choose the right hand one because it's turbulent flow since we determined it's turbulent. So I'm going to do entrance length is going to be four times four. 4.4, sorry, 4.4 times Reynolds, which we found to be 11,000 to the one sixth in our diameter, which is 25 times 10 to the minus three. Right, and this gives me a note that the only thing that has a unit is this guy here. So whatever unit you put for this guy is gonna render the unit for the interest length. I'm putting it in meters, so I'm gonna get this in meters. 0.53 meters, okay? So what we're saying is it takes 0.53 meters or 53 centimeters for this flow to become fully developed. How long is our pipe? Do you guys remember? What is the length of our pipe in this problem? Uh, two meters, cool, thank you. Two meters, okay? So what we're saying is that, let's split it in half and then in half again, okay? So ish, right, about, so this is about 0.5. So this would be our entrance length just there. So our entrance length is about one quarter down the way. So what we're saying is that if this thing enters the pipe over here on the left-hand side, and it's going, this thing is air in this case, right? So air enters on the left-hand side. And then once it reaches this point here, about quarter down the way, it becomes fully developed. So if I measure the velocity profile at any given point along this same radius here, I should get the same velocity magnitude, okay? So in other words, about three fourths of this guy is fully developed and about one quarter of it is not fully developed, it's only developed. So for this situation, I'm gonna choose fully developed flows, okay? Like we said before, what are the other options, right? The other options would be, let's say this number turned out to be, say this number turned out to be three, that could happen, right? Three meters. So the entrance length for this guy would be over here, right? So therefore, the pipe's not even long enough for this guy to become fully developed, right? So this is an underdeveloped flow for sure. Let's say we redo the math and we end up with this guy being, um, I don't know, point 0.1. So right in the beginning, it becomes fully developed. So for the majority of it, it's fully developed and we can take it to be fully developed. Let's say this guy is um, 1.7. 1.7 will be kind of like here. So for the majority of the pipe, this would be underdeveloped flow and I can take underdeveloped equations to solve this, okay? Mind you that this is not 100% because we need to do this analysis. That's why I always tell you guys to um, use this with caution. In this unit, in your working, your problems, that is 100% okay, you can use it with confidence. If you're doing research on this, if we're going deeper into details, if you're doing, um, if you're doing uh, your thesis or th something, then you're gonna find out that there's more to it, there's more equations, there's more things you need to keep an eye for. Um, yes, that's correct. Okay, so therefore, 
uh, therefore, fully developed flow. plus turbulent, okay? 30 seconds for you guys to find the equation. So you guys should have found this one. And this one has N there, and you'll see that N is, there's two possible values for N. This can be 0 0.4 or 0 0.3. And students have told me that the way that it's written there can be confusing. So. What that's telling you is that the fluid is heating. Let's write down the whole thing. So the fluid is heating up, heating up. Then it's 0.4. Is the fluid is cooling down? It's 0 0.3. Okay. So this requires one extra step from you guys, analysis wise, to figure out what's happening with the fluid. So let's go back quickly and have a look. We have. Um, so, wrong. so we have 75 on the wall and our bulk temperature for the fluid is 25. So definitely this guy has energy incoming, right? So we have energy going from the wall into our fluid and therefore our air is heating up. It should enter T1 with a certain temperature and leave us T2 with a greater temperature. So this guy is heating up, which means that I am using this 0.4 here, okay? So Nusso equals 0 0.023, Reynolds 11122, 0 0.8, Prandtl from the table uh, 7296, and 0 0.4. Nusso equals 39.2. Okay, once again, please remember this will be H characteristic length, diameter, right, over conductivity. Uh, in this case, you'll note that the conductivity and diameter are exactly the same, magnitude-wise, so they go away, and our um, convective coefficient is therefore the same one too, 39.2. Okay, so if we're looking for small q, or if we're looking for q over a, then all we're looking for is the convective coefficient times the difference in temperature. We had difference in temperature from the start. All we were looking for was the convective coefficient for this situation. And we got 39.2 and I'm multiplying that by the 75 minus 25 Celsius or Kelvin difference in temperature. So Kelvin, Kelvin, and we're left with watts per meters, which is meters squared, sorry which is exactly what we were after. 64. And that will be an end. All right, it's right there. Questions from your end?